hey everybody it's the pothead professor here with all your cannabis knowledge needs today we are doing another episode of terpene tuesday uh we're going to be looking at some individual terpenes today going a little bit of a deeper dive uh if you have not seen the intro video to terpene tuesday is giving you a brief kind of overview of what terpenes are why i'm talking about them definitely check that out uh, but today we're going to be looking at myrcene. So myrcene is actually the most commonly found terpene in all of cannabis. Uh, it's the one you're most likely to see and most likely to see in the highest amounts. Uh, while it is more thought of as a more indica-leaning terpene, for reasons we'll get into, uh, you'll see it across pretty much every sort of cannabis, both indica, sativas, and hybrids. So it kind of spans the spectrum. Outside of the cannabis plant, myrcene is found in high concentrations in hops, as well as mangoes and basil and lemongrass. Uh, and it actually has a long history in places like Brazil and Mexico and even Germany, where they use either lemongrass tea or high myrcene hopped beer for sleep aid, as well as pain relief. And those are things we use it for in the cannabis industry as well. That sort of pain relief, relaxing, anti-anxiety, muscle relaxer, you know, sleep aid, things like that. And in Brazil, they've used Mercia, which is the plant Mercine gets its name from, for treatments for diabetes, diarrhea, dysentery, and hypertension. Now, of course, terpenes are a huge factor in the smell and flavor of different things. And in the beer industry, they use high myrcene hops to get a very earthy and peppery sort of flavors. They also use myrcene in the perfume industry, as well as in soaps and in other um, additives for other foods as well, just for the flavor. Now in cannabis, we get more of a subtle fruity flavor, as well as some muskiness and some of that earthy tone as well. As with everything related to cannabis and of certainly terpenes particularly, the lack of research is really hindering our full knowledge of this. Many thought that myrcene itself was adding to the extra sedative and pain relieving properties of cannabis. There's actually research that shows it's simply a piece of a puzzle acting upon all of the cannabis plant itself. They have found that myrcene actually lowers the resistance of our blood brain barrier, allowing for more of the cannabinoids to pass through it into our brain, thus giving us a fuller effect. They've also found that myrcene itself stimulates parts of the brain that produce natural opioids. Just like we have our own endocannabinoid system, we have our own opioid system, and our brains produce some opioids, giving us that pain relief and that anti-anxiety and everything like that. But the myrcene actually also helps promote that opioid production in our brains. Once again, leading to more of that sedating and pain relieving sort of effect. Myrcene has also been shown to improve glucose tolerance in mice, which could lead it to be a treatment for diabetes. They've also found that it can block some cancer-causing aflatoxins produced by fungi. So like many terpenes, it does have some anti-cancer and anti-tumor properties. But once again, the research just isn't quite there for us to fully understand its effect on these things. So certainly if you have any other questions about myrcene or terpenes in general, throw them down in the comments. I'll try my very best to answer them. I am also going to link uh, all the sources I use for researching this video in the description if you want to just dive a little bit deeper on your own. But the big takeaways here are that myrcene is actually going to open up your brain to allow more cannabinoids into it. So something with a lot of myrcene, you're definitely just going to feel that harder and heavier. So definitely something to keep in mind when buying your different cannabis strains. So until next time, take it easy, everybody. Mm -hmm.